the way to satisfy the entropy condition the uh, is a contribution by a person called uh, Godunov. So he first constructed a numerical way to calculate the flux, which is a modification to the upwind flux that guarantees that the solution satisfies the entropy condition. So what is his solution? His solution, it's still, we it, remember like in the, in the upwind scheme, we're thinking of approximating the solution as piecewise constant. Here, we still do the same. So here, we are explicitly considering that we are storing the solution averages, but like then we are reconstructing the solution as piecewise constants. So let's say this is our numerical solution. Okay, so this is my domain, this is my u, and this is delta x, 2 delta x, etc. So in between every two grid points, the solution is a constant. Of course, that's a first order approximation, right? So we are going to get a first order scheme. But like this is going to get us at least a, a, a entropy satisfying solution. And then we can talk about later how to extend that to second order and higher order. So with that piecewise constant approximation, we want to compute the flux at every interface. Now, computing the flux is an interesting question because previously we are considering that if this whole thing stays as a shock wave, what is going to be the flux, right? So we have been we have been using upwind, and to determine to determine which side is upwind, we are using the speed of a shock wave which implicitly assumes that this discontinuity is going to stay as a discontinuity after some time. In reality, we just looked at it, it is no longer the case, right? In some cases, this discontinuity is going to be no longer discontinuity almost immediately after you start evolving in time. So, good enough insights is really from that is really analyzing for each every interface analyzing is that discontinuity going to be if you solve the equation exactly for infinitesimal amount of time is that discontinuity still going to be a discontinuity after a while after this infinitesimal amount of time and then after that analysis you should be figuring out after this infinitesimal amount of time what is the flux over there I'm just going to give you an example of the same uh, thing we did before. So that is, if we have two cells, one cell being minus one, the other cell being plus one. Okay? And the cell interface lies over here. According to the upwind flux, the speed is equal to zero. So it's okay to either choose the flux on the right or flux at the left. Either way, the flux is going to be half of u squared, which is equal to half. But, use good enough insight. What is going to be the flux at this point after an infinitesimal amount of time? Think of that. What is the shape of the function after an infinitesimal amount of time, if you are solving the equation exactly? So you should, after infinitesimal amount of time, you should have an infinitesimal range of solutions between minus 1 and 1 that goes linearly. That's right. Now, what is the flux at the interface after infinitesimal amount of time? Zero. That's right. Why is it zero? Because the value of the function at this point is going to become zero very soon, right? And it'll stay zero for a while. And so the correct way to say the flux at this particular interface is the flux is equal to zero, not half. It's not, you shouldn't choose either the left side flux nor the right side flux. It is zero. Zero is the right flux to choose at this point. So of course, this is a special case. What is the more general case? The more general case is exactly thinking like that. 
if you solve, if you analytically solve the differential equation in a very tiny region around the discontinuity for a very tiny amount of time, what is going to be the flux value? What is going to be the solution value at that discontinuity, at, at that, or not discontinuity, at this location where the discontinuity is at t equal to zero, but maybe not after a small amount of time? And then figure out the flux of that u value. Right? There are many different cases. For example, if I have a discontinuity originally like that, and it has advanced towards the right, I become like this. Then I should choose f of u left as my flux. Right? If I have a if I have a discontinuity like this, and after a while it stays as a discontinuity but advanced towards the left, then my correct f at this point is f of u right. Do we agree? Okay. And there are other cases if originally I have a discontinuity, I mean we always originally have a discontinuity if we approximate the solution as piecewise constant. But later on, it becomes no longer a discontinuity. Let's say it goes like this. So, so it no longer becomes a discontinuity, but like it goes towards the left or towards the right. I still should be having f of u right. And if I originally have a discontinuity and it becomes no longer a discontinuity, but, but at vex towards the right, I still want to use f of u left. And the very last case is I have a discontinuity in the beginning and the discontinuity becomes like that. While the right hand side of the solution goes towards the right, the left side of the solution goes towards the left. Then I should choose f of u, the particular value of u that stays stationary. Okay, do we see all these cases? Yes? The last case is when the left hand side are have different characteristic speeds and they go towards different directions. They don't have to have equal value, right? The minus one one case is a is a is a special example. But I even if you have minus two one, you still are going to have the same problem. You still compute the wrong flux if you just use upwinding. The discontinuity crosses the horizontal axis. Oh, yeah, okay. So for Berkeley's equation, that's that's right. For Berkeley's equation, because my characteristic speed df du is equal to u, there, yeah, that's right. It only changes sign when u changes sign. So, so the, for Berkeley's equation, this would only happen if the value of the solution is positive on i plus 1, cell and negative at i cell. That's right. For other equations, that's not necessarily the case. Can you say in general, what are, what are the scenarios where I have to choose a f that is neither equal to f of left nor equal to f of right? So in this case, u right is greater than u left. If that is the case, then in dfdu has to change sign in, in what way? It should go from negative to positive as u increases, right? Yeah, that's right. So, so dfdu has to go from let's say zero from negative to positive, which means f has a what over here? has a local the, the, the maximum over here, right? So so if you look at f, uh, it has a local maximum over here, and the value we choose to evaluate in this particular u is actually the maximum of f, is the local maximum of, uh, of f at this location. Do, do you get it? Like, this is actually, this is max of f, for for u that is greater than ul and less than ur. 